Okay, let's integrate this rational function where you have this polynomial, this, cu uh, this quadratic polynomial in the numerator and this cubic polynomial in the denominator. Um, always check to make sure that the degree of the denominator is more than the degree of the numerator. And it is. It's a cubic in the denominator. So you can start the process of partial fraction decomposition and that starts with factoring the denominator, but that's already been done for you. It's great. Now, let's take a look at the types of factors that the denominator has. The x minus 2 is called linear. This x squared minus 4x plus 13 is a quadratic, but it's an irreducible quadratic. Why is that? The value of b squared minus 4ac would be 16 minus uh, 52, uh, 4 times 13. And so it's less than 0. The roots are imaginary. And so it's called an irreducible quadratic. And how you handle that is different. So um, I guess the second step is to uh, recognize uh, recognize the type of factors that you have after you, after you've um, factored it. This has already been done for you. And so now we need to decompose our fraction into into many fractions that we can integrate. And so what we do is, for a linear term, that decomposes just to be some constant over that linear term. But when you have an irreducible quadratic, it decomposes to be some linear term, bx plus c, all over the original um, irreducible quadratic, x squared minus 4x plus 13. And the goal would be, the goal would be to integrate these two fractions that we end up with, if we can. That would be our goal. And so, just fix this up here. Let's go chase down what A and B are. Decompose um, correctly and solve for the constants. In this case, A, B, and C. It would always be three constants, but in this case it is. Well, how does that work? Well, you actually work kind of backwards. Now let's think of putting this back together. If we were to make this one fraction with the common denominator, it would be that the, the fraction with the A in it would need to be multiplied by the quadratic, x squared minus 4x plus 13. The fraction with the bx plus c in it would need to be multiplied by x minus 2 in order to get the original numerator 6x squared minus 23x plus 58. Okay, the denominators just aren't written here, but they would be the same, and so we're just matching the numerators. Match the numerators um, after putting the two um, decomposed fractions together. After um, adding the, the decomposed fractions. Okay, so now let's go. Let's chase down what these constants are. Now we have to um, say that this is true for all values of x, this statement here, and so we're going to pick x smartly. Okay, we're going to pick x to be equal to 2 because it would make this x minus 2 term go away. On the left hand side, we'd have 6 times 4 minus 23 times 2 plus a 58. On the right hand side, we'd have a and it would be multiplied by 4 minus 8 plus 13. And so, Working with the left hand side, we have 24 minus 46 plus 58. OK, 
Okay, that's 82 minus 46. It ends up as 36. On the right-hand side, we have a negative 4 here plus the 13. We have 9a. And so 36 being equal to 9a thankfully tells us we don't have a fraction value for a. a is a nice integer value. a is equal to 4. Great. We have the value of a. And we chose a number that would make the denominator 0 in order to get it quickly. But that's it. We don't have any other numbers that would make our denominator 0. And so now just we need to make a random choice, but a smart random choice where um, we're going to, I'm just going to say, uh, let's pick x equals 0. Seems to be easy to plug in when you say random, not so random, you pick it so that you don't have any trouble plugging in. The left hand side just becomes 58. And the right hand side becomes 13a plus C times a negative 2. Wow, so the, B's went, the B went away because the B is multiplied by X. That works out well. Now that we know the value of A is, is uh, 4, then 13 times 4 is 52. So we plug a 4 in here, and we get 52 minus 2C is 58. And so subtract the 52, and we get that 6 is negative 2c, or the fact that c is negative 3. Great. Chasing down these constants. We know two of them. We just need one more. We need to be able to go get b. So we do it again. We pick another value of x. And so, let me just quarten this off here. So we have the value of a. We have the value of c. Um, let me over here now go try to get the value of, of b. I'm going to pick another sort of seemingly random choice, um, something easy to plug in. I'm going to choose x equal to 1. I'm going to pick that. Okay, what does that lead to? Well, by picking x equals 1, back to the original, we end up with the following statement. 6 minus 23 plus 58 is equal to a times 1 minus 4 plus 13. b plus c times a negative 1. Okay, great. But we know a is 4. And we know c is negative 3. Let's plug these guys in. On the left-hand side, we're talking about um, 58 and 6 together give you 64. 64 take away 23 would be uh, 41. That's your left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have uh, 10a. We have uh, minus b, basically minus c, if we distribute this. But we know a and b. Let's go ahead and, um, a and c. We let's go ahead and plug those in. So a is 4, so we get a 40 here. c is negative 3, so we get a plus 3 here. So 41, 41 is equal to 40 minus b plus 3. Or the fact that 1 is equal to minus b plus 3. Take away the 3. The fact that negative 2 is minus b. We end up with the fact that b is 2. And now we're good. We have our three constants. a, b, and c. Now let's try to tackle the calculus that goes into integrating what we're what our result is 4 over x minus 2 plus 2x minus 3 all over x squared minus 4x plus 13 this is supposed to be something that we can integrate and we definitely will be able to integrate this 4x 4 over x minus 2 we'll be able to integrate that and let's go to the next slide to see how we're going to deal with this 2x over this um, irreducible quadratic. Let's go to the next slide. 
And so we're at the point where we have 4 over x minus 2, 2x minus 3, all over x squared minus 4x plus 13. We're trying to integrate that. And we definitely can find the antiderivative of the, the first term. That's 4 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2. Now, we have to deal with the second term. And it would, would have been nice if uh, we could do some kind of use up. Think of letting u be equal to the entire denominator, x squared minus 4x plus 13. If you let u be that entire denominator, what would du be? Well, du would be 2x minus 4. And that would be times um, dx. Well, what do you have? You have 2x minus 3. Almost have exactly what you need. And so what we're going to do then is make it so we have exactly what we need. We're going to just add and subtract so that we have 2x minus 4. If, we're, if there was a minus 1 here, then it would be 2x minus 4. And that would be great. But then we have to balance that out with a plus 1. You can't just add without taking away. And so then by doing that, what happens nicely is we have 2x minus 4 all over our original denominator. x squared minus 4x plus 13. And then we have plus 1 over that x squared minus 4x plus 13. It's really nice to do this. What it does for you is it allows you to do a quick uh, u substitution to, to, uh, to get part of it, and then we have to deal with this other integral here. So we just basically said that 2x minus 3 is 2x minus 4 plus 1, conveniently so that we can do a u sub with this part, and then we have to deal with this animal later. Okay, we'd have exactly then at that point 1 over u du, which is the natural log of the absolute value of u. And so now we know how this guy, um, with the antiderivative of it is, the natural log of the absolute value of the denominator. x squared minus 4x plus 13. And we have this guy here from before, 4 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2. Now let's deal with the very last integral here. It's, it's a bit of trouble. Okay, it's more trouble than it should be. If it was a nice perfect square, we'd actually be in good shape. And so, we need to make that happen. We actually have to complete the square to make it happen. Let's take x squared minus 4x plus 13 and let's add something to create a perfect square but what we need to do to balance that out is take away that same thing in order to make this a perfect square the relationship is that you take half of this coefficient on x and so that would be a 2 and then you square that and that would give you a 4 and so it would be so nice if we had a 4 in there because then we would have this perfect square. Well, we add this 4, but then we take away the 4. And so what that gives us then is 13 minus 4, which is a 9. And so then this integral will become um, the integral of 1 over the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 9. Why is that desirable? It almost looks like an arctan. It's a derivative. Um, we would do a u substitution, let u be x minus 2, and then du will just be dx, and this guy would look exactly like 1 over u squared plus 9. And then we can, we can um, find that antiderivative and trade it back in for x. Okay. If you have 1 over x squared plus a squared that you're trying to find the antiderivative of um, 
it turns out to be um, 1 over a, the arctan of, of x over a. This is a formula that you can just take off your cheat sheet. Um, if you want to know where it comes from, you just do a an algebraic manipulation of uh, of this by factoring out the 9. And so we end up with 1 over 3, the arctan of u over 3, which we have to trade back in for x's. Final answer then would be 4, natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2, plus the natural log of the absolute value of x squared minus 4x plus 13, and then finally plus one-third the arctan of u, which was x minus 2, and that's over 3, plus a constant. And that would be the answer to your question. And this here was just sort of side work that helped us out along the way. And we have the final answer then. We have found the antiderivative. And this is an example of one that has an irreducible quadratic in it and the things that can happen when you have that. Okay, great.